NVIDIA is doing some kind of shady stuff when it comes to their graphics cards. AMD has said that they're not worried with what's going on in the market right now, and the PlayStation 5 can compress data better than your pants compress you after Thanksgiving dinner. Let's get into the hot news, my friends. I'm your host, Brett. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on this here very interwebs. Let's start off by talking about a report that came out from PC Gamer that according to NVIDIA, their Founders Editions graphics cards won't become light hash rate additions. They will just be the full version that can actually mine. In a statement to PC Gamer, the NVIDIA spokesperson said, Founders Edition is a limited production graphics card sold at MSRP. And at this point, we don't have plans to make versions with LHR, which is weird because number one, why does the fact that it's sold at MSRP have to do with anything? Are you just saying that it can't be scalped by retailers? But that's not necessarily the problem that's going on here. If anything, Nvidia had the biggest problem with bots when these cards launched and they were one of the most susceptible companies to actually just kind of filling out exactly what happened with the crypto market, which is why they transitioned everything to be on bestbuy.com. So the fact that they're saying that it's sold at MSRP isn't really resonating with me. But then also, why aren't their cards getting this treatment? It seems like they're speaking out of both sides in their mouths, where on one hand, they're saying, hey, we care about gamers, so we're gonna make sure that we only sell graphics cards that aren't good for mining. But also, on the other hand, we're gonna sell graphics cards that are good for mining, but only if we take 100% of the cut because there are cards, not these AIB partner cards that have act added on coolers and all of this extra stuff that we don't get a cut from. We'll sell them the chips, but then they make money off of everything else. That's not right. We need 100% of the money. That's at least how it's coming across to me. PC Gamer had a different interpretation of it. They essentially thought that this might be Nvidia saying that this is the death toll for the Founders Edition, where they're not going to be really selling them all that much more, which is why it doesn't matter whether or not they're LHR, because they're not really gonna be out on the open market, which just also goes against kind of how Nvidia has been positioning themselves in the market with the Founders Edition. If we just look at the history of how Nvidia started rolling things out, Initially, it was just that everybody could sell the Founders Edition and they didn't have their own store. Then they opened their own store. Then the Founders Editions were exclusive to NVIDIA and not the AIB partners. And then with the launch of the 30 series, it was very locked down, very controlled by NVIDIA that the Founders Edition was theirs. It doesn't seem like NVIDIA is trying to give up the Founders Edition or let it go. It seems like they're really trying to hold on to control. So it's really weird that they're not updating it for LHR because this could just position them as being the better choice for miners instead of having all of these other companies sell directly to miners. And so they get that cut. But also if this is them kind of transitioning away from Founders Editions for the 30 series, the fact that they're not coming out explicitly and saying that is also weird. And then bringing up the fact that it sells at MSRP just wasn't the point in the first place and just doesn't sit right with me. If the problem was pricing from the begin with, you could have done something about it, NVIDIA, but now you're saying it's the pricing problem after you've already made it clear that miners is all the problem, but all you did was made it so that the everyday person can't mine at their system at home. I'm not 100% sure why this is happening, but all I can tell you is that something isn't adding up. But you can add up how many times the 3080 Ti has gotten leaked. It's been a lot. I don't have enough fingers to really do that, but Lead Tech and Palette have the 3080 Ti's confirmed by EEC filings, as well as pictures. Those look like graphics cards. Hooray! Good job. But in case you're considering the future of graphics cards or the future of technology as a whole, TSMC has some good reports for you because they have claimed that they've made a breakthrough on development for their potential one nanometer chips, which is just huge because currently we're on five nanometers and then we go down to three and then we go down to two and then what I counting down, you get it right. Like I, I didn't need to explain that. I feel like an ass after saying that. Anyways, the researchers at the university said that they've found a way to use semi metal bismuth as an electrode for these chips as opposed to the current usage of tungsten, whereas Intel uses cobalt. But 
changing up what makes up the transistor's contact, the electrode can make it so that they can get down to these smaller sizes and potentially even sub one nanometer in the future. It's not 100% clear if this will actually make its way into production. It just shows us that TSMC is actively investing in the future of large scale development of their lower end processes and that we could have a bright future of more tech all the time, more computers going faster all the time. Thank you, TSMC. And thank you, Sony, for thinking ahead on how to compress games, just squeeze them down. After data has been collected on the PlayStation 5, it turns out their Kraken protocol, which is just the fancy name for their compression algorithm, they can reduce file sizes by up to 60% compared to other consoles. Taking Subnautica, for instance, on the PS4, it goes for 14 gigabytes, but then when it's stored on the PS5, it's only five gigabytes. Also Control Ultimate Edition on the Series X is 42.5 gigabytes, whereas on the PlayStation 5, it only takes up 26 gigabytes, which is a 39% reduction in file size. This isn't just the games are being made different from Sony, it's actually the technology that Sony made with their IO controller, with their SSD, the entire process loop that they spent an hour of having Mark Cerny explain it to us is a really big deal and also kind of makes it more acceptable to only have 825 gigabytes of storage because you're actually getting more out of it with the compression technology. And are you getting more out of crypto memes? Let's talk about the GameStop and go to MD. GameStop, the 170, up 1%. Good job, proud of you. Crypto market came back. Were you worried? Did you did you have a bad day yesterday? Were you crying tears of just gamer uh, sadness because you don't have your own sadness anymore because you stole their GPUs, so you also stole their tears? Well, don't you worry. Bitcoin's back up over $40,000, up 2.5% on the day. Ethereum up 6.3% on the day to 2,800 bucks. Dogecoin also hitting up those numbers, 10.9%, 40 cents a Dogecoin. It's not 50 cents. It's not. 60 cents it's not even a dollar but it's still back up from its crash yesterday don't ever count the crypto market out friends what's wrong with you and also don't uh send bitcoin transactions if you're not 100 percent sure of the amount that you're sending because uh they're final there's no reversing them really it's not it's not a thing that's built into the to the bitcoin network anyways uh the cryptocurrency company blockfi accidentally sent a lot of Bitcoin to a lot of people and made it so that they lost millions because they were sending out gifts or like prizes for some sort of competition thing that they had. And instead of sending the winner $700, they sent them 700 Bitcoin, which is worth $21 million. BlockFi came out and said that they carry loss reserves, so it's not a real big deal because we had enough money in our bank account to kind of take this hit. However, they're gonna be working with the people who got the wrong transactions to kind of, you know, give it back because it's it's a lot of money, even if you have loss reserves to kind of make this not such a problem for your bottom line. But they also said that they fixed all of the processes that made it so that they could issue way too much money in Bitcoin to, to, to winners so that never happens again. And you thought Linux was never gonna happen again, didn't you, you Microsoft pleb? Well, now Chrome OS now has Linux out of beta. Yeah, so you can install Linux apps on Chrome OS. Opera, you can install it on iOS and Android now in beta. Ow, my hand. What browser are you using on your phone? Let me know in the comments. Ow, that doesn't make as good of a slap. Ford unveiled its F-150 Lightning yesterday with up to 300 miles of range, 563 horsepower, and starting at under $40,000 for the cheapest version. Now, all of these features don't get conglomerated together. You wanna have that $40,000 version, you're getting less range at 250, but it's still a pretty good deal. It also has a rated payload of 1,800 pounds, towing capacity of 10,000 pounds, and the best feature, a 400 liter frunk up front, which is just like the design of this yes okay it opens up like a tailgate instead of having it so that you have to reach in over a hood this makes a whole lot of sense for it i'm very proud of you for that you're also going to get a touch screen on the inside with all of the technologies that come with that 150 kilowatt dc fast charging that can also be used for vehicle to low transfer where you can power your home but you can also power other vehicles potentially and again starting at a price point of under forty thousand dollars and you can put it in a reservation for a hundred dollar refundable deposit at this point. However, a fully loaded F-150 Lightning is going to cost you $90,000, which isn't a cheap penny. Ford also announcing partnership with SK Innovation for EV battery production. They're working with them to produce 60 gigawatt hours annually in battery cells for their upcoming electric vehicles. And Tesla! 
has a delivery event day, June 3rd, for a vehicle that they said was coming out in February. Boy. Your hands red. The Tesla Model S Plaid getting a delivery event at the Fremont factory, which I will remind you that during their earnings call, Elon Musk said they were shipping out within weeks. It has been months months and now they're having a delivery event where likely the car won't actually be going out to customers they're gonna let you know there when it's going out to customers so yeah Elon good job on your timelines and Lisa Sue is saying good job the entire market because we're in a mega cycle and it's bad but it's good it's all fine she's not worried she'd semiconductors go through these cycles okay sometimes where supply is greater than demand demand is greater than supply it's not a big deal AMD is making tons of cash all right enough cash to do four billion dollars in stock buybacks for their company with the board of directors at AMD saying that today's announcement reflects our confidence in AMD's business and the success full execution of our multi-year growth strategy, which is just essentially showing that AMD has a ton of cash on hand that they're willing to do for buybacks because they want to have more control over their market share. And so they're uh, they're going to do it. AMD moving forward. AMD is also moving forward with its roadmaps. We've got a new roadmap leak of the six nanometer Rembrandt chips that are supposed to be rolling out to laptops. You can see here that they're there, it's on the roadmap. Zen 3 Plus, Navi 2, we kinda already knew all of this information, six nanometers, it's, it's, it's what it is. And AMD also confirming something that we talked about in a previous episode of Pot News with a B2 stepping now coming out to Ryzen 5000 chips, which is essentially just a mild refresh of the chips that are currently on the market. But they did know in their statement that there will be no performance difference between the B2 stepping and the original stepping, and that this is just a kind of just new production. So that 100 megahertz boost that we saw on potentially what could be the 5950 XT is not gonna happen. There's no performance increase. It's just, it's the same chip, friends. You don't need more. And you don't need anything more than an Intel GPU. So why don't you go check out yesterday's episode of Hot News so that you can find out more about that. And we will see you on Monday, my friends. Thank you for be sticking with us on this. Bye.